The ancient Egyptians of North Africa left behind a wealth of monumental legacies and concealed dark secrets that have remained hidden for thousands of years. As scientists delve into this mysterious civilization, they are unearthing groundbreaking archaeological discoveries that challenge our understanding of this mysterious world. Join us on a journey to uncover the 10 strangest recent discoveries in Egypt, revealing a past more intriguing than we ever imagined. A century after the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb, archaeologists are still making incredible finds in the Saqqara archaeological site. Recently, a team uncovered the tomb of an undocumented Egyptian queen, along with 300 coffins containing astonishing artifacts. These coffins, adorned with striking faces and scenes from the ancient Egyptian funerary text, the Book of the Dead, are believed to belong to King Tutankhamun's generals, advisors, and other dignitaries. Each coffin bears the name of the deceased and depictions of the four sons of Horus, protectors of the deceased's organs, with some even having two lids. Inside these coffins and tomb shafts, archaeologists found a trove of artifacts, including games, small figurines known as shaptis, statues of the god Ptah Sokar, and a metal axe held by a mummified soldier. The most extraordinary discovery was the queen's tomb, made of solid gold. Named the Royal Queen Ney, she is also referred to as the goddess of creation, or the mother of Ra, the sun god. Zahid Hawassa, an Egyptologist, remarked that this discovery is monumentally significant, rewriting history by adding this new queen to the records. The task of unraveling the mysteries surrounding this sovereign and the 300 other coffins is daunting, as most known burials in Saqqara from the Old Kingdom or the Late Period, while these findings are from the New Kingdom. Despite the challenges, scientists remain hopeful that they will soon uncover more about this mysterious past. In 1979, about 35 miles east of Alexandria, a group of soldiers led by Pierre-Francois Bouchard during Napoleon Bonaparte's campaign in Egypt made a remarkable discovery while digging the foundation of a fort near the region now known as Rosetta. They stumbled upon the Rosetta Stone, a black basalt slab almost four feet long and two and a half feet wide, inscribed with ancient writing. This stone contained a decree by a council of priests confirming the right of the 13-year-old Pharaoh Ptolemy V to rule Egypt. What made the Rosetta Stone extraordinary was that it was inscribed in three languages, Greek, Egyptian hieroglyphics, and Egyptian demotic. At the time of its discovery, only Greek was known, making the task of deciphering the other two languages seemingly impossible. However, scientists soon realized that the Greek inscription conveyed the same message as the other two scripts. This breakthrough allowed scholars like English physicist Thomas Young and French scholar Jean-Francois Champollion to crack the code and unlock the secrets of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics and demotic texts, Historical records suggest that stones like the Rosetta Stone were placed in every sizable temple across Egypt. Today, the Rosetta Stone resides in the British Museum, a fact that has sparked considerable controversy. Egyptians have repeatedly requested its return to its homeland, a claim now supported by some historians and academics who believe that repatriating the stone would help preserve history and honor Egypt's cultural heritage. In February 2021, at the Taposiris Magna Temple in Alexandria, archaeologists unearthed sets of tombs containing golden-tongued mummies dating back to the Greco-Roman period. Later that year, in December, similar burial practices were discovered at the archaeological site of Oxyrhynchus near the modern-day town of El Banasa, and again in the Manufia Governorate. During these excavations, another man buried with gold foil chips shaped like human tongues was found. 
This discovery was particularly unique as the archaeologists stumbled upon not just two sarcophagi, but also one that remained completely sealed and intact. While the first two tombs had already been looted by grave robbers, they still contained two human bodies with the peculiar golden tongues, along with a large limestone sarcophagus. The secured tomb revealed several amazing ancient relics, including undisturbed limestone coffins and more golden-tongued mummies. It is believed that the real tongues were removed during the embalming process by ancient Egyptian embalmers, who thought that replacing them with gold would enable the dead to communicate with Osiris, the Egyptian lord of the underworld. Ancient Egyptians believed that Osiris ruled the underworld and judged the souls of those who entered it. They thought that having the ability to speak to this god and ask for mercy would help the deceased successfully enter the afterlife. This discovery provides insight into ancient religious beliefs as archaeologists continue to explore the Kuwaisna site, which has been under excavation for more than 25 years. Their ongoing work aims to uncover more incredible antique treasures and deepen our understanding of these ancient practices. During the time when the Hyksos, a people believed to have originated from northern Canaan, controlled part of Egypt, they made their capital at Amaris, known today as Tel El Daba. The Hyksos, who had resided in this region for over 3,600 years, appointed King Kayan as their ruler. It was during King Khan's regime that an unusual practice came to light, hands buried in the sand. This practice remained a mystery until 2011, when a team of archaeologists excavated Khan's palace and unearthed skeletons of 16 human hands buried in four pits. In two of these pits, broken right hands were discovered at the entrance of the Hyksos Palace. These hands are believed to have been presented to the king or his subordinates in exchange for gold. The other two pits, located in an outer area of the palace, contained the remaining 14 hands. What makes this discovery even more intriguing is that all the hands were right hands. No left hands were found. Manfred Biatak, project and field director of the excavations, explained that each pit containing these hands held different meanings. This was the first archaeological evidence of the practice of right-hand amputation, although references to soldiers presenting the amputated right hands of enemies to their superiors in exchange for gold exist in ancient Egyptian writing and art. However, no records of this practice have been found in the Hyksos homeland of northern Canaan, leading researchers to speculate that the tradition might have been adopted from the Egyptians or originated elsewhere. Many researchers now turn to the Egyptian Narmer palette for explanations. This object, dating back about 5,000 years, provides insight into the grisly treatment of prisoners in ancient Egypt and may shed light on the origins of the practice of cutting off right hands. In 1922, the English archaeologist Howard Carter entered the sealed burial chamber in Thebes, Egypt, where he discovered the golden mummified remains of the ancient Egyptian ruler, King Tutankhamun. This remarkable find was just the beginning. Fast forward to September 2020, when a team of archaeologists began excavations on the west bank of Luxor, near the Valley of the Kings, approximately 500 kilometers south of Cairo. Within weeks, they uncovered formations of mud bricks radiating in all directions, enclosed by a distinctive nine-foot-high zigzag wall. This discovery was identified as the Lost Ancient City, known as Aten, or the Lost Golden City. The precise size of the city is yet to be determined, but its age is clear thanks to hieroglyphics found on various items within it. For instance, a vessel containing two gallons of boiled meat was inscribed with Year 37, dating it to the time of Amenhotep III, Egypt's most powerful pharaoh. Among the many ritual items discovered were scarab beetle amulets, bricks, vessels, colored pottery, and mud bricks bearing Amenhotep's royal seal. 
Archaeologist Salima Ikram, who leads the Egyptology unit at the American University in Cairo, compared the lost Golden City to Pompeii, the sophisticated Roman city found in southern Italy's Campania region. The architectural design of the site suggests it was a bustling center, complete with residential areas, a bakery, kitchen items related to metal and glass production, administrative buildings, and even a cemetery filled with rock-cut tombs. This discovery not only sheds light on the daily lives of ancient Egyptians, but also provides a glimpse into the grandeur of a long-lost civilization. The mysterious labyrinth of Hawara, also known as the Black Pyramid of Dashur, is a place where secrets lie hidden and tales of ancient intrigue come alive. Located about 60 miles southeast of Cairo in the middle of the desert, this structure has become a controversial site for both tourists and archaeologists. Built by Amenemhat III, the sixth pharaoh of the 12th dynasty, the pyramid stands about 75 meters tall with a base of 105 meters and an incline of 57 degrees. Its limestone casing gives it a raw and gritty look, reminiscent of ancient fortresses. However, the most exciting feature of this archaeological site is the underground structure, resembling the design of a medieval kingdom, which was discovered by archaeologists in 2008. This intricate subterranean passageway captivated even Herodotus, the Greek historian and geographer who visited the pyramid in the 5th century. He described it as an extraordinary complex with countless rooms. The subterranean structures of the Black Pyramid are divided into two sections, one for the king in the eastern quadrant and another for his wives in the southern quadrant. Each section has its own entrance, connected by two corridors. Inside the king's chamber lies a pink granite sarcophagus adorned with a serec motif, while the queen's chambers contain similar sarcophagi and several pieces of jewelry, including an alabaster perfume jar, two mace heads, and seven alabaster cases shaped like ducks. The labyrinthine passages have a ritual significance, described as the home of Osiris, the ruler god of the underworld. Some of these passageways lead to the king's section, which remains mostly intact and holds a sarcophagus and canopic jars. The labyrinth contains 12 courts covered with gates facing each other and two kinds of chambers, one above ground and one below the upper set of chambers. While the upper site has been explored, the lower division remains a mystery. Attempts have been made to represent the labyrinth based on descriptions from ancient texts. But the truth of what lies beneath the sands of Hawara remains elusive. The enigma surrounding the labyrinth continues to challenge our understanding of history, transforming it into a captivating puzzle that beckons further exploration. Based on insights gathered from various discussions, it has been proposed that the ancient Egyptians could have potentially possessed electric lamps predating Thomas Edison's invention of the light bulb by many centuries. Among the compelling pieces of evidence, the temple of the goddess Hathor at Dendera stands out as a repository of exquisitely preserved carvings and hieroglyphics from antiquity. One specific aspect within this temple draws particular attention. It seems to depict what can only be described as rudimentary forms of illumination. A cable is depicted running along the floor, connecting to a lotus base, which in turn is linked to a sizable glass vessel containing a filament resembling a snake. Strikingly, this portrayal bears an uncanny resemblance to a crook's tube, an apparatus utilized during the early exploration of cathode rays and electron streams. It's worth noting that a Norwegian electrical engineer was the first to identify these intriguing parallels. Additionally, the nearby inscriptions mention the light of the Creator God, providing corroborative weight to his hypothesis. As we delve deeper into this captivating narrative, it becomes apparent that this revelation stands as a testament to the remarkable ingenuity of ancient civilizations. 
The Great Pyramid is a wonder of the ancient world, and one of the most studied buildings in the 21st century. After years of existence, it still holds more secrets to itself. Recently, a team of Scan Pyramids researchers confirmed the existence of a corridor leading to a secret chamber hidden beneath the north face of the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. These researchers revealed the entrance to this ancient edifice, which they believe to be the original entrance to the Great Pyramid. This secret passage was discovered using a cutting-edge technique called Cosmic Ray Muon Radiography Scans and through the use of an endoscopic camera. The results of the scan showed that the passage could accommodate several people at once, leading many to wonder if the underground area was an assembly for pharaohs. Christian Gross, a geophysicist at the Technische Universität München in Germany, believes the hole in the pyramid is something unique, with similar structural features seen repeated above the burial chamber of King Khufu elsewhere in the Great Pyramid, as well as in the Maidam Pyramid located 45 miles south of Cairo. Sebastian Procureur, a physicist who published the first pictures of the passage taken with the endoscope, confirmed that the pathway had no rooms, no footprints, or any other signs of human activity within. This led researchers to conclude that the chamber had never been used or accessed for decades until now. They plan to continue their scans at the site, hoping to find more artifacts and uncover more secrets of this ancient wonder. We've reached the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video, and we will see you in the next one.